Okay, everybody, who can relate to this? Who can relate to this? <laughs> As I have a little kitten right under me right now. Oh, let's see if she behaves. She somehow always knows when I'm going to go live. <laughs> She's going to come and bite me here. All right. Uh, I hope you had a great weekend. I didn't. <laughs> No, I mean, I really did, but that said, yesterday, uh, it was absolutely beautiful. John, you got to come get her. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't know. Here, let me... Everybody loves your fathers. I know. <laughs> Say hi to the people. <laughs> Anyways, yesterday was one of those beautiful days. In Livermore, it's fall, and it's it gets warm during the day and gets cold at night. It's fabulous. But anyway, so I thought, okay, I'm going to go for a walk. And I went, I was on uh, my walk that I always go on, and I was listening to This American Life, great podcast. And um, I'm walking along, blah, 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 blah. And you know when a sidewalk is like this, and then the other side of it's like this? Well, my toe hit it on College Avenue, very busy, very busy, and I went down. And it was real interesting to me because I first you look and you go, oh my God, did anybody see this, you know? And then I couldn't move and I thought, can somebody help me? My, my watch, SOS, SOS, and I'm like, no kidding, Sherlock. So, but I said, no, I'm fine, I fell. So I called John, to come get me because first I thought I could just get up and dust it off and then all of a sudden I thought I might throw up. <laughs> you know? I think it was just a shock in the whole thing. So um, I can't tell you how many cars drove by and <laughs> left me sitting there on the sidewalk. I almost I almost went and just thought I'm going to lie down and then John said maybe they thought I was homeless. <laughs> No, I will say this. If you see an old lady on the sidewalk at sitting in the dirt, you might want to stop and ask if she needs help. So nothing broke. Yay. I'm kind of skinned up and, and I'm very sore today, but I can still quilt. So that's what matters. Okay. Enough of that nonsense. Um, he, it is Monday, October 24th. And uh, this is what we're going to work on today, but you always send me, um, oh, wait, oh, believe that's how Pat Sloan broke her wrist. Okay, so I'm scabbed up here, no big deal, here, and my knee, it's like that. I mean, it's just, <laughs> and, and I told Robin, my girlfriend Robin, uh, John came and got me, and I thought I was going to pass out. And she said, because you were in shock. <laughs> so pick up your feet. <laughs> Look down. <laughs> now I'm afraid to go walk, and I know that's so stupid. I can't stand it. Anyways, I'm here. <laughs> Yay, without a boot on. <laughs> so, okay. This, where's all my notes? This cat was from Carolyn. I just had, I just thought that was the cutest thing in the world. Yeah. And, and the fact there's even a boat in it, Carolyn, makes you have nailed it even more than you'll even ever know. Okay, so I got this from Carol, and this is her, um, what's her dog's name? It's here, and Winnie. <laughs> she just simply patched together a bunch of cafe squares. This is fabulous. Remember, we have some of that fabric still available in the store in beautiful bundles. We have a warm bundle like this, and then we have a cool one in blues. But what was really cool about it was she went after straight line quilting, and then after watching the, what we've been doing here, she kind of took it block by block and did some things on a diagonal, some things straight, et cetera. And it really, it, it lends itself to look like it's homemade. I mean, I just love it. You know, I took a class from Cave, and what he taught me, because I'm all about light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, like behind me. And what he taught me was that when you're working with this fabric, so you look at the quilts that he and Liza do, you go from one color and it blends to the next color. Well, kind of like, kind of like the broken dishes here. How, um, the, 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 let me see if I can, yeah, there, right there, right there. 
it, there's no abrupt color change. It blends, it blends, it blends. So thanks for sending that. I super appreciate. Okay, and then I got, um, okay, where's my notes? Where's my notes? I got this, and oh, I didn't know your name. I'm so sorry, but let me go forward a little bit here and then come back. She was at a retreat um, um, in Sharon Springs, 2007. She has a group called uh, Sisters of the Heart. And look at this fabulous, fabulous butterfly picture that she sent. And as we talked to Carla on Friday, the cherry wood challenge is going to be monarch because it's an endangered species. So uh, then I believe then this was the quilt that you did that you found monarch um I think this is it, Monarch Butterfly Fabric for the backing. Now, what was really sad was at it, it, um, Sharon Springs in 2017, there were a ton of them, and they just went back, and there aren't a ton of them anymore. And one of the really cool things, and we talked about this Friday, oh, I took it out, is there's some milkweed seeds in here that I think would grow in Livermore, but... Um, you know, if you could just spread it out there and save the monarchs, right? So I love this with cherry wood. And I actually got a lot of really nice letters from you. And um, thank you for that. Okay, now I'm lost at where I want to be. Okay, there we go. Then Robin, um, who I know, she's in the, back to cherry wood. She um, did the first challenge after Watch of Wicked. And after watching on Friday, she's thinking she might do the Monarch one. And I'm, I'm, I'm still really considering it. I've kind of been in a creative slump. And my thought was by doing this, it would get me out of it. And I can handle Monarch, okay? But there they are. There are, there's Galinda on the left and Elphaba on the right from Wicked. How cool is that? Robin, thank you for sending me that picture. That really put a smile on my face. You know, I know Robin from TQS. And, you know, Paducah and this and that and in shows. And it's been so weird not seeing everybody. And when I get something like that, it just makes my heart sing. I miss you, girl. Okay, so this is by Evelyn. This is, you know, Color, Color My World by Wendy Williams, Block of the Month that we did last year. These are all cherry wood fabrics. So... Thank you for sending that. Now, I asked what is the back of it because that's the background. That's not cherry wood. And she said it was Tim Holtz. So absolutely beautiful. Here's another one. Oh, okay. So this is Kathy. Can't believe she didn't get a first. I kind of want to see what the first ribbons are. I think she said third or something. But um, this is the first quilt show that Paradise, California has had since, remember when Paradise burned down maybe four years ago or five? And it, this is their first quilt show. It's the Paradise Guild that was sponsoring it. This makes me happy on 10,000 levels, okay? Again, I boy, I wish I could see what got one and two, right? <laughs> and then Carol, we've been watching Carol all along because she chose to do Color My World out of wools. Now, Carol is not a quilter. This is her first quilt. Well, yesterday I was meeting with my little mini group. Um, we do a Zoom on Sunday if people are in town. And mini, 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 mini group. There's four of us. There were three, now there's four. And we started talking about Carol. She has to have some sort of needle skills in her background. She has to. She did, it's my understanding, she did take a Sue Spargo class just to kind of wrap her brain around it. Okay, but this is just amazing. And I got to tell you, that floral border nails it. Absolutely nails it. I wouldn't have thought to have done that. And it, this is how we learn. This is how we grow as quilters. Um, I, I, yeah, this is just something else. And look at the quilting too. Hey, Carol, are you a quilter now? Just asking. <laughs> oh, and then I was, I was going through Facebook and I want to show you something Margot did. 
she was very concerned about this. And then when she got it together, she was like, yay, Margot, I love this. And you guys, my guess is these are very, very, very small blocks. And this is kind of, our neutrals quilt is a poor man's version of this and what those little squares and four patches can do. I mean, that is spectacular. And it's my guess, it's rather large. So, all right. Okay, wow. Well, I'm, well, that's like taking, okay, John, I think John just said this, Carol, that's like taking up golf and getting a hole in one on your first try. <laughs> So uh, I will show you what I did yesterday, what I worked on with my little mini group while I was, while my little knees were bleeding. <laughs> okay, remember, oh, oh, okay, this is important. Finally have a schedule for December and January. What we're going to do is um, we're going to wrap up the basket quilt and we're, we're only, we're about middle of it right now. So don't think it's going to happen in 30 seconds. Then in December, we're going to just do this whole kind of slow stitching just where you can take a little bit of a corner of a room and just do your stitching. And that's what I'm working on. And then January, we'll do the ties. All right. I just, I, I don't want to get into the ties when we're in the middle of chaos with the holidays, because that's going to, that is going to, you're going to have to use your thinking cap. And I'm going to have to use my thinking cap because I'm not giving anybody a set pattern. This is going to be something where I might come up with five or six different blocks I might suggest, but this is going to be a quilt along, kind of like the cave mystery quilt, okay? But this is what, um, so I, I drew this pattern, and I realized it was for a Mediterranean cruise. I outlined all of the uh, images on it, and I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it, and then I started filling in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so when we do it, I'm going to suggest that you just do the outlines, that's it, and then go and fill in. I wish I hadn't done those long skinny leaves and then filled in the line. I wish I hadn't done that because that's a playground for just a ton of different stitches. Super jazzed about the apple pear and um, the two apples in a pair. Super jazzed about that. So we'll be learning all that stuff just to kind of sit back. Nothing hard. Nothing hard. Um, that was not hard, just time consuming. Okay, there we go. Yay. All right, everybody's here. Okay, we are going to machine applique down th this, these handles now. You can do it by hand if you want. If you need handwork, you got these things all ready to go. Um, remember, one side was pieced, for lack of better words. Uh, stitch down by machine. Stitch down by machine is better, all right? And you, of course, have raw to the inside. We flip over, iron, and then you've got a beautiful finished edge here. Now, you got a couple choices when it comes to thread. I really do love Monopoly, all right? Uh, I've spoken about this before, but I still get emails about it. A Monopoly, it's not a monofilament. It's a polyester thread, which... I use in my bobbin all the time, my 80 polyester, and it comes in smoke and it comes in clear. Because it's poly, it has a little stretch to it. Uh, Quilter Selects carries it. We have it on the website. Pretty sure YLI has it. Pretty sure Superior has it. But you want a mono poly. And in this case, I would probably use clear and not smoked because that's the two colors they come in. But another option that you have are these 80 weight polys, all right? These are pre-wound round bobbins that, well, first of all, we have them um, by spool too, okay? But I love this for when I'm doing machine applique and I want to blend in the color and I don't want to use a polyester. So in this case, I, I would just choose the color that most blends with the handle and that's what I would use. Don't worry about what's in the bobbin. Don't worry about that, other than I love my 80 weight in the bobbin. Now these pre-wounds I use on the top of my machine, just like a regular spool. Um, the pre-wounds do not fit my Bernina, 
However, they do fit like, um, oh God, uh, Brother. I mean, there's a lot of machines that accept pre-wounds and we also have these in solid colors too. But I guess I'm just saying, don't freak out that it's on a spool because you can still use it on the top of your machine. And I will tell you, I use this to bind my quilts because it's so dang strong. It's an 80 weight. Okay, so that. Now let's talk about the physical setup. Um, all right, I have, and I'm gonna go to my board in a moment and walk you through what I'm doing. I am working on a Bernina 765. And for those of you that have seen this before, forgive me, but I, it's always my prayer that somebody new is here. You can see here that I've got an open toe um, foot. This is a number 20 if you are in the world of Bernina. In other machines, I don't know, but I love that it's open toe so that I can see what's going on. Now, I normally, I always, not normally, I always piece with a single hole throat plate. In this case, I don't want a single hole because I've got to be able to move the needle here and there and get done what I want to get done. All right, I'm gonna show you how to get to the hover mode too. All right, close your eyes or I'll do this. I don't wanna make anybody seasick. Oh, there's, whoop. Oh, I'm kinda of getting a weird reflection. There, that's better. That, what you're seeing there is me and then the little camera. I have no way around that. Okay, so I am going to use a blanket stitch, all right? But I don't want to use a blanket stitch as it is. On this particular machine and on many Berninas, and if you're on another brand, you've got to find it. You got to go find your blanket stitch, okay? So here it is right in this little area. I call this little patchwork quilt. I'm going to go there. And there are two blanket stitches here. There's a single blanket stitch and a double blanket stitch. I'm going to use the single. What I've learned from Ricky Timms is that if it takes you one minute on a single, it's going to take three minutes on a double. And now the double is great if you're doing like raw edge applique and stuff like that because it gives an extra added protection. But we're doing finished applique, okay, because we're using the finished size of, side of the handle. So I'm going to go right here. And I can see up here what's going on. I am going to move this stitch all the way to the right using this button. Okay, there we go. Look at that reflection. I wonder if I turn off the light, if that'll make a difference. I don't think it will in this case. Let's just see. I might have to turn it back on when I'm stitching. No, that doesn't help at all. Okay, let me go back here. I'll turn it back, eh, turn it back on. Hmm, weird, okay, get out of here. All right, so I'm all the way to the right and I can see that right here. Now a funny little thing on, on Bernina's, and I, I again, I'm sure on your machine there's something like this too. As soon as I have moved this to the right, I have disrupted the stitch, so to speak. And when I have disrupted this, the stitch, you will see in yellow, see how normally it's white? You'll see in yellow what's going on. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I am going to make it longer. Whoops, that's the wrong direction right here. Move it a little bit over. Maybe if I go like this, that might work a little bit better. Okay make it longer, maybe a 3.25 or something like that. Um, it's very difficult to see, but this has turned yellow also. And then the width, this is, um, if you're a beginner at this, I would probably do, oh, uh, maybe a 1.0 or 1.2, 1.1, um, like that. And you can see now that this, you, this has been, uh-oh, there we go. This has been changed, this has been changed, and this has been changed. But yay, there we go. Now, I when I do my stop starts, 
I like to go to one of these stitches on the top row. It doesn't matter which one. I'll just go to the center because that's the one I'm used to. I'm going to make it super small, super small, super, super, super. Whoops. 0 0.05. And then I'm going to move this all the way to the right. This is what I'm going to start with. And this is what I'm going to stop with. And what's so great is you can toggle between these two stitches and not have to reset it each time. Okay, many of us bought a Bernina for the knee lift and what the uh, freehand system they call it. And that makes the presser foot go up and down just by putting your knee against this thing. In the olden days, olden days, that was the gas pedal on your machine. But let me show you how to get to the hover mode. When I'm doing applique, I can't think of, actually it's on all the time. Now something else I just learned about my machine is that if you, if you turn off your machine, everything goes back to clear, right? But if you go into this, this is the factory settings, the gears, all right? As soon as I go in there, if I change something, it is in the factory settings and I can turn it off, turn it on with no problem. So I'm gonna go up to this screen right here. I'm get setting it for the hover mode. And then I'm gonna go over here and how you're gonna remember this is beyond me. You might have to watch it a couple times and then write it down. Let me see if I can get this any clearer. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go there and then over here, down here, is the hover mode. To me, it's not real clear, but it is. Normally, it comes with it on this, where there's zero um, hovering. I like it on the middle one. And what happens is, okay, I'm gonna get out of here. Now, it's set in my machine. What happens is, is if your needle is in the down position, like this, every time you stop, it will just hover up a little bit. Well, you'll see in a moment here. So I love that. I, if I don't want it to hover, I can just change the needle position to up and it will not hover. Okay, so here we go. Let's take a look down here. Um, oh, that's pretty good, except I can't, no, I can't see. Let's see how good I can do this. All right, so, hmm. I'm going to start over here. Oh, I am using a yellow thread. All right. And that's so you could see. Um, it's not what I would be using on the real deal. Right. So I'm going to take a stitch if you want. There we go. Pull it up. I'm just going to pull that up. I mean, I really don't have to because this isn't like I'm quilting, but it's a habit I've gotten into. And then I'm gonna, I wish you guys could see this, it's hilarious. Okay, then I'm gonna go over to the single stitch that I've just set on that top bar, and I'm gonna take a couple stitches. All right, now I'm gonna go back to the other one. All right, okay, I'm good to go. Oh good, you can see it, as well as I. Now where this hover mode comes in handy, okay, right here, see it goes up. I love that. I love that, see? And for applique, you can't flip and beat it. And I'll go back and look at questions. There's no way I can take my eyeballs off this right now. This is absolutely mesmerizing. And I mean, to do it, not you watching it, or maybe it is, I don't know. Whoops, I missed there, because I wasn't paying attention. You know what, I think I had this on too fast for me. Here we go. Okay, now I'm gonna come down to the end. And I'm gonna go back and push that top row center button. Oh, shoot, I didn't touch, touch the wrong one. Not good. 
Well, don't do that. Okay, let me go back. <laughs> Dang it, what happened? Oh, I'm on the wrong screen. Oh, there we go. Okay. Well, this is perfect. Okay, come on, are we down there? I touched the wrong row of the stitches. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. I go like that, and then I can just cut the thread with the thread cutter. Now, what would I do with this mess right here? What would I do? I probably would pick it out with my seam ripper, and if it seems that um, the stitches are gonna come undone, I might go back and just take a couple other stitches on my machine, because that's gross. That is gross. So that's what I would do. Well, let's do it. I always have my seam ripper. All right, so let's pick this. Okay, and if I cut that, I'll get that out of there. I don't have any little snips here. When I cut that off, those little hairs, it's going to be just fine. Yay, saved. Another day is saved. <laughs> Another day. <laughs> okay, let me get back to me. Oh, I am. <laughs> there we go. So, I mean, these, now, you could do it by hand, too, if you want. Uh, one of the mess, somebody asked me the question, what does this measure? And I said, she goes, I'm having like a brain freeze or whatever. People, that happens to me all the time. I'm like going, I should be able to do this. This is ridiculous. It will finish six inches, okay? So it should be six and a half. All right. Purchase a Bernina. Well, Sonia, if you do go out and purchase a Bernina, remember, I'm worth a hundred bucks. They, um, I can send you a coupon, and um, you mail it directly to Bernina USA, and they just send you money. This has nothing to do with um, your dealer. No, I don't have to stitch the other side because it's. I flipped and sewed it, right? I flipped it, and I and so no. And the beauty of it is, if I were not using yellow thread, you will not see it. Now, one of, on either side. Now, one of the things is sometimes you do see it when you're stitching it. You're like going, oh my gosh, she lied to me. Her pants are on fire. When it goes and gets quilted, it all just goes away. I, this is the best, all right? And again, I use the um, blanket stitch and I change it. There's, um, I know other machines have um, applique stitches, just Play with your machine. These are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful machines. Okay. Okay. Oh, Nancy, thank you. My Kawandi quilts, Sujata made them for me. If you haven't seen her show, it's really, she's beautiful. She's a beautiful teacher, a beautiful human. And she actually made them for John and I to each have placemats. I can't bear to use them for that. So right now, I'm just enjoying them on my design wall. Sujata Shaw. If you're looking for somebody wonderful to have a Zoom lecture with, Sujata Shaw. I mean, I, I can't say enough about this beautiful woman. Um... Next time, now time to peer and use a clapper set. Next time to pair and use a yeah, Okay, time to press and use a clapper set, like to st get those stitches down, right? Okay, I think... Did you tell your Bernina that you were using a different foot? No. Um, some of the Berninas, you have to tell them you're using a different foot. On mine, you don't. Um, and that's not a big deal. It, what it's doing is, is it's saving you from your own mistakes. Okay? So, but on mine, 765, which is a special edition, you don't have to tell it. Where it does stop me is if I'm using the dual feed foot and I forget to put down the dual feed or I don't have a dual feed foot on it, it will warn me that something weird is going on. I'm telling you, it's smarter than myself. Uh, 
Okay. All right. When do we see the 2023 BOM? Supposed to be in within the next two weeks. And the actual quilt supposed to be in this week. Okay, we're actually going to have the quilt this week. I, I, I want to show you the quilt, okay? Um, I don't think it resonates in pictures. I want you to see the quilt. So I'm all in, I'm, as soon as we get the quilts in hand, I'm going to fight and say, let's, let's show it. I, what do you say? Famous, People want to know. It's a famous pattern maker from Australia. Uh huh? She used a famous fabric line in it? Yes, she did. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah, we used to always show it at Houston. And again, that's, well, markets this weekend and it's a family wedding. So I'm not going to be there and I'm just sick about it. I'm not going to be, I, I, I just, I can't even talk about it. Although I'm so happy for the, my nephew, for him getting married. Um, they were supposed to get married and then COVID hit and that just shut the whole thing down. And before the dates were totally compatible with Houston, but unless you've been raised in a family that's a professional quilter, you don't know these things, right? You don't know. What? The, li the quilt is in the shop? The, the quilt itself. Who oh, said that? Who said that? Lila. How does she know that? <laughs> the quilt's in the shop! <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push for next week, okay? So on Wednesday, this is what we're going to do, and I talked about doing this about two weeks ago. I'm going to talk about when weirdo shapes don't line up. Okay, we know on the basket, like the base and all that, or when you have a triangle and a square, but there's other weirdo shapes too that are not so intuitive. So I'm going to do a little thing on when weirdo shapes don't line up. And then Friday, I haven't been out to the store. You can bet I'm going out there today. Um, I'm gonna, we're we're going to do another thing of my favorite things. The girls are going to pick their favorite things and show you what they are. And we are still working on um, the 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 shopping day out at the warehouse the weekend before Thanksgiving, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And you're going to have to sign up for it. And it's going to be I think how it's going to happen. It's going to be really weird. Is that um, we have five minute slots and not that you have to get in there and shop for five minutes, but it's a way to stagger in cars and stagger out cars as well as human beings. Our hope is that you spend about a half hour in the warehouse and then uh, check out and hopefully this will all be managed beautifully. I'm not in charge of making the sign up. I think John and Kristen are, so stay tuned on that. Okay. Yeah, Marie, thank you because of your mentioning you took Sujata's class. So glad. Oh, she's going to be teaching at Asilomar. So is Barbara Black. So is, um, I know I'll, I'll do a whole thing on who's teaching at Asilomar real, uh, real soon. Okay. How do you spell the gal's name to look for her? Sujata, right below. S-U-J-A-T-A. If you put that in the search bar, she'll come up. Okay. I'm using the 765. Um, the thing about Sujata, and then I got to get off because it's going too long. Um, she's Indian and she's lived in the U.S. for I think about 30 years, but she is infused with Indian culture, Indian lifestyle, Indian everything. Um, they, they, they live like they, they don't eat like how I eat. They eat Indian food that she makes from scratch. The colors of India are just so vibrant in her world. And this Kawandi, these Kawandi things, um, are very free form. And that translates over into her other classes that she does. She is a treasure and I'm ever so lucky that she leave, lives less than 10 miles from my house. Okay. Okay. Weirdo shapes. Well, you got it, Margie. When weirdo shapes don't line up. Coming up Wednesday. And hola to Costa Rica. 
There we go. See you guys later. See you Wednesday. Weirdo shapes around the corner.